Hello and welcome to Engineering Sustainable Photographic Processes. This video is supported by the Royal Academy of Engineering and is in collaboration with Dr Leah Nani Alkinsell at the University of Birmingham. Today we'll be using the basic cyanocyte process. So we'll be using iron-based salts that are mixed with water and once they're mixed with water we'll apply them to a piece of paper. Once dried, this solution can be exposed to UV light, either from a UV lamp or from the sun. And this way you can make amazing photographic prints that go completely blue and white. This is an environmentally friendly process and it's much more better for the environment than any other type of analogue photographic process. So join me now to make some cyanotype. Here are the things that you will need. Chemistry. A jug, some water, a brush and some paper, a box and a UV ultraviolet light. We are now measuring out the potassium ferricyanide. It is a very bright red colour. We are making an emulsion which is basically like a paint. Unlike other paints and emulsions, this will be sensitive to light. We are measuring out 10 grams. We are now adding 100 millilitres of normal water. You should mix until all of the red crystals dissolve. Potassium ferricyanide can take a little while to dissolve, so just keep stirring until all the crystals go. You should end up with an orange liquid. We are now measuring out the ferric ammonium citrate. This is a very bright yellow colour. We are measuring out 25 grams of ferric ammonium citrate. We then mix in another 100 millilitres of water until we have a kind of greeny blue liquid. Make sure to dissolve the powder really well. We are now going to mix the two chemicals together. So I pour one jug into another. The liquid is now sensitive to UV or ultraviolet light. We are now going to paint our emulsion onto a piece of paper. I am using Fabriano Academia paper because I know that it works really well. You paint one way horizontally and one way vertically. You need to coat very sparingly as it will dry better this way. You can also do this in a dark room. Just make sure you are away from daylight. is a contact printing frame and this is a box that I've modified to have a UV light on top of it. This is a dried piece of paper and I'm going to put it inside of the frame. I'm then going to put a negative on top. A negative image shows light objects as dark and dark objects as light. This image is printed on acetate or a transparent material. Light can now go through the transparent material and affect the paint or emulsion underneath. 
I'm now adding a UV light to the top of the box and turning it on. I'll put the frame inside the box for 10 minutes. The UV light will then darken the paper to a dark browny rust colour. Be careful not to look at the UV light for too long as it can damage your eyes. After 10 minutes, you can take your frame out and turn the UV box off. Now my print is a brown rusty colour, I know that it's ready. And you can see that the transparency has left a mark. I'm now going to put my cyanotypes into normal water to wash all of the chemistry out and I want to make sure that all of the yellow mixture comes off my print. You can do this in a tray and you can also do it under running water. You should wash until your print goes completely blue and white and make sure that no yellow residue is left behind. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and if you make results. I'd love to see your cyanotypes. In the next video, you'll be able to see how to make anthotypes with spinach and blackberries, so do look out for that. This video has been sponsored by the Royal Academy of Engineering and in collaboration with Dr. Leah Nani Alkinsell at the University of Birmingham. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.